Welcome back to this four-part series for managing analytics at scale. This is part three, training machine learning algorithms. During part two of the series, analyzing industrial data, we took a look at a pump failure problem impacting our business globally. We visited our Florida plant to understand how that plant was able to manage the impact of the problem better than all the other plants. It turned out that their day shift team were practicing some good old fashioned rules of thumb or heuristics that were passed down in the form of tribal knowledge from their veteran day shift supervisor. With Prophecy C-Sense, the team was able to match those heuristics to repeating patterns in the data set, revealing an early predictor of the pump failure. The very next step was for us to replicate this analysis at all the other plants. All we had to do was to take a look at the maintenance records to identify when failures occurred, and then simply go find the corresponding times in the historian for each set of the pump tags. What we found was very interesting. The same predictor patterns appeared for every failure we analyzed, but with one big caveat, they all appeared on slightly different scales. For example, data from the Shanghai plant, shown here in the bottom left of the chart, all occurred well below the entire data set we pulled from our mobile plant. The same is true for all the other plants as well. It turns out that several factors such as equipment age, operating environment, maintenance practices, ambient temperature, and more all determine a pump's baseline for what normal looks like. Furthermore, that baseline moves around with age and with each season. So clearly, our plan to implement a simple limit-based analytic across all 250 pumps isn't going to be feasible. So we'll use machine learning instead. We want to teach the algorithm what normal data looks like. And we also want to teach it what early warning data looks like. Just like a person, the algorithm needs some examples to learn properly. So we'll load a quick scatter plot. We can see clearly that the two plants are represented in the clusters, mobile up top and China down below. Next, we'll go ahead and separate normal from warning data for both the mobile and the Shanghai plants by using the brushing tool. Once that's complete, we can go ahead and export the data set separately so that we can use them both for training. Now that we've separated the warning data from the normal data, we want to make sure the data set records are given appropriate labels, and then we can rejoin them with those labels so our algorithm will be able to clearly see the difference between normal and warning. Here, we're going to create a new field in our warning data set called class. We will simply give every row of data in the entire data set a new record with a value of warning. We've already done the same for the normal data set, so now we'll simply join the two data sets. This is easy to do with out-of-the-box tools within CSense. Here we're using a vertical join. So now that my final data set is just about ready to go, we can go ahead and plan to load it. And once that data is loaded, we can navigate over to the machine learning selection page. And here we can pick the model that we wish to train. In this case, we're going to pick a nonlinear classification model. When we do this, we're presented with some configurable options, such as predictor variables and the target variable. Now, in this case, the target is simply that recently added class variable that consists of that normal and the warning values. Well, once we put all these inputs in, the analytic will now construct a nonlinear model over a subset of this data while reserving a smaller subset for testing the result. Now, upon completion, we can visualize our results in many different ways. And we can see that we have very high accuracy in this case. So with this kind of accuracy, we know that we're done training the algorithm. Now, the final step in this process is to export the work that we just did here to a drag and drop analytic editor environment. There, we can further customize the inputs, further customize the outputs. 
And once we get loaded up here, you'll get a look at what we call CSense Architect. And in CSense Architect, as we navigate to the right here, you can see that we have the red block. And that red block itself is, in fact, the machine learning classification algorithm that we just trained. Now, the interesting thing is that this classification model is actually compatible with all of the pumps across the entire enterprise. So the next thing that we want to do with this analytic is actually get it deployed. So in the next part of this video series, we're going to talk about deploying edge analytics at scale. That's going to be part four, and we hope to see you there.